I've begun working out the leg details for my workbench top here. I have my vise mounted. I have some scraps. I was doing some experimentation. I've never done this before, so I have my mortising tools, various saws. I just picked this one up. It's a brass back tenon saw. Even have my little book out. So I started out, this actually was fairly easy to cut with just a hand saw, so I'm pretty confident that's not going to be a problem. Now making the mortises, that was a different story. I had some difficulty. I attempted to do it with drilling the holes, chiseling. This wood's very hard, so it doesn't chisel super easy. So I came over to my other option using the router with a uh, half inch spiral fluted up flute bit. Did a little test plunge in here. It seems to work okay. That's going to be the route I'm going to take for cutting these out. So next step I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up all this. I have my stock sitting over here. I'm going to figure out my layout for the legs and get ready to mark them all out so I can start cutting the mortise and tenon joints. All right, here's a little project update. I have cut successfully a tenon on one side here of this cross brace, and I squared up the pockets. It does fit in nice and snug if you hammer it down. Took quite a bit to cut this by hand. This wood's very hard to cut. So my new plan today is I have all my pieces, you know, squared up on the chop box. I'm going to take them over to a friend's house who has a nicer table saw than I do. Also going to bring this dado stack of blades. I'm going to either use these or a combination of these and some other methods. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to do some experimenting. And hopefully by the end of the morning here, I'll have all the rest of my tenons cut. I have squared up. Quite a few. I have quite a few more to do for squaring up my pockets. And I will bring you back when we get the table saw set up and start cutting. Just wrapped up sanding the legs. I wanted to make sure before I glued them all up, I had them at least rough sanded, but I decided to just keep going. So I actually brought them up to a uh, 600 grit on the random orbital. I'll glue it all together and then I'll hit it just one more time, you know, maybe with either the 600 again or maybe an 800. I made a little test block here, sanded to 600 on one side and 240 on the other side. I'm gonna be uh, trying out that Odie's oil 
So I just made this as a sample block before I go to my actual project. So I do a test on that. So one more day is time I'm gonna do a dry fit up, then I'll be ready to glue. I just wanna dry fit, make sure everything still fits right, and then I will figure out how I'm gonna clamp this all together. So this is going to be my setup for when I glue this all together. I put some tape and marked so it's easy to tell which pieces go where because once I start gluing I'm going to be on a limited time schedule here. I made up these blocks to act as a filler just to keep my spacing. I checked it with the square. Everything's perfectly square. So I procrastinated enough. It's time to glue this together. All right, I kind of had to ignore the camera there for a minute because with one person, this is a little bit of a task to get all the clamps, get all the joinery put together. It's looking pretty good. I've never did this type of work before and this is my first time cutting mortise and tenon joinery. Some of my joints are perfect, you know, that's a good one. This is a pretty good one. Uh, the inside ones are a little bit not as good, but they're on the inside, so can't really care about that. All these kind of projects, it's all about what's an acceptable tolerance. And for a workbench, this isn't some fine piece of furniture that's going inside a house. I'm going to say I am pretty pleased with how this came out. Okay, it's been a couple days. Uh, it's been a little cold, so I let this dry for about four days before I removed the clamps. So I popped the clamps off, went around and sanded. A final sand, any of the glue that was maybe sticking out, cleaned that up. And then I just hand sanded the whole thing with 600 grit. So everything's looking pretty nice. I have my test block here that's 600 on one side, 240 on the other. I bought this little Odie's Oil starter kit off of Amazon. I'm gonna give this stuff a try. I've never used it before. It seems like an easy finish, and for this kind of project, easy is good. So I'm gonna open this up, and I'm going to apply some on my test block, see how it looks before I move on to the legs. Okay, the kit comes with some nice soft terry cloths. It also comes with, I think there's 10 of these here, the applicator. I opted for the um, zero abrasion since I sanded it to 600. I didn't feel the need for the uh, one that has some abrasives in it. So these are just the white. Also comes with some stir sticks. And this should be the Odie's oil here. I'm going to take a little bit of the Odie's oil and I'm going to, just a tiny little bit here. I'm going to put it actually on the applicator pad. And we're going to rub it in to the 240 side first. Okay, it goes on pretty easy. The 240 side looks pretty good. You have to let it sit for a little bit before you buff it off with the terry cloth. 
Uh, you can feel it's a little tacky, not really tacky, I guess just oily feeling. So I'm gonna let that side sit, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna continue to use what's actually left on the cloth. I'm not gonna add any more. You can even see, even just if it's on your fingers, the little bit that's on my hand will rub into the, into the grain of the wood. So I'm gonna leave this sit for a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and buff it. Overall, my first impressions, it is pretty easy. You put it on the cloth and you rub it in. It's not really like uh, any science to it. I have one coat on everything and I can see in some, some spots it's sucking in more than others. So I'm gonna hit it one more time with a light second coat and see how much absorbs in. And if nothing absorbs in on the second coat, I'll buff it and then the legs will be done. That's partially why I picked this product. It was supposed to be really easy and I didn't want to mess with any like polyurethanes or any of that kind of stuff. I don't know how well this is showing up on camera, but this came out really beautiful. I went around with the cloth, flipping it, buffing it out, removing any residual oil, and now I just have a really nice finish. It's not super shiny. It's got just the right amount. So the next step, I will be flipping this onto the, the right side up, onto the ground. And I will be doing the final sand on the top and then applying the Odie's oil. I'll bring you back when I get to that step.